Good afternoon, uh, I'm retired veteran Melvin Swan of the Lake Manitoba Reserve, retired military police, Anishinaabe veteran. I always speak about the truth and I deal with reconciliation for the military and maybe Veterans Affairs and a few other organizations. Uh, with the statements these people make about our people, a lot's happened in our history in this city. You have J.J. Harper and all that racism that continues on systematically in the city. I think a lot of times people forget to recognize what's happened to my people, whether it's policing, whether it's health, with any other system that's here in front of us. The will for the development of reconciliation has to be thought out. It has to be given in a spiritual sense. And I think our people have that. With that, with that I want to start today's press conference with my own Anishinaabe prayer in my own language. Cool. Cool. On the Mishum Sak, the Zeman Du, and the Sun Danimo, Wabanum, Chaganum, the Gabianum, Yetnum, and the Nakum in the Zeman Du, the Penis Namanigis Yotis in Umoget Kamek, Kinagago, Mahatak, as you the Chakuma, Kinagago, Gagis on Dan, the Nok Matis in Oem, Wemish Kosigan Tiging, when they big up Mitchum. Awegisisa <laughs> I always carry the truth of my ancestors and where I come from directly in the language I speak. My father was Chief Raymond Swan of the Lake Manitoba Reserve. And when I look back at my ancestors, ancestors, I am a direct connection to them because I don't get lost in this society. With that, I'll turn it over to my good friend and brother Robert. He's an important naval officer, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mala. Yeah. Oh. Nima Koloma Kantik, Tense Nima Tani, Atawa Pamtikuk. Thank you, uh, Elder Swan, for your words and your prayer. We are gathered here on uh, Treaty One Territory, homeland of the Ishnabeg Nation, the Nehiho. You know, we say this uh, symbolic treaty greeting often in a lot of political events. And I actually love saying it because it's, it's so meaningful. Because there's a power in symbolism. But today I don't really actually feel like saying it very well, or very much. Uh, last night there was a situation that happened at a mayoral debate for women and safety in the city of Winnipeg. And some comments were made which were extremely inappropriate, racist, unfortunate. And when we think about the work that everyone who's standing up here or even over there listening 
has been doing on the issues of reconciliation here at City Hall, at the provincial level, at the federal level, and yes, it's difficult sometimes. It seems we take two steps forward and then we always take two steps back. People sometimes use these political events to It's, I think it's just very difficult. And I think I have a lot more questions than I actually have answers. A lot of questions about what's in someone's heart. And running for mayor is not just simply something which should be, you know, anyone can sign up for it. There is a cost to it. You have to get an auditor. And you're out there representing the community. And so if someone who's standing up for mayor and who's attempting to do a, an important campaign or trying, says those things. I wonder what's in the hearts of other citizens in our city, in the heart of our country. I think about my children at a time like this. Because when I speak with children, you know, they often don't have this racism that exists in their hearts. They don't exist imperfectly. They are, in fact, perfect. It's us, the adults, that have a lot of the issues. You know, I guess we could ask a question. Are all black men violent? Are all white men racist? Are Asians? The list could go on. And obviously we know these things are not true. You know, to categorize one people as entirely one thing is wrong. And, and that we should not accept that. You know, last night, you know, it was a forum about women and safety in our community. And the men standing here with me today are some very strong men who are out in their community. Men who work with the Central Park Patrol going out each and every night trying to feed homeless people in our streets to look after people. People who worked at the Métis Friendship Centre, people who were veterans, who stood up for our country. Men who believe in programs like the Moosehide Campaign. It was started by a man, a husband, a father and a daughter out by the Highway of Tears in, in British Columbia. And this actually has an impact, these types of programs. This is real reconciliation in action where, you know, people in high positions in the federal government come together a few times a year and then they talk about what they can be doing in their day-to-day -day lives and in the policies that they implement each and every day to make a difference in our country. And they fast for the entire day. It's not a day where there's food and there's uh, dancing or celebration or it's easy and donuts and coffee and croissants, but where it's actually hard because they can't eat the entire day. And they have to think about what it is that they're going to be doing in the RCMP, in the military, in the ministries of justice. On days like this, I think about, you know, how hard it is sometimes to be an indigenous person in our city. It's not always easy. For instance, the braid I'm wearing today, I have this braid, I wear it proudly, but there are times when people, when I was in the military, people would say, oh, you should cut that off, or I'd have people who are supposed to be helping in leadership roles saying, you know, I don't like what you're doing, I don't like what you're wearing, I don't like who you are as an individual. And they would say that to you openly. Or how even when running for mayor, some people will call up and offer advice and say, hey, you know, if you actually want to get elected, you should cut that thing off because people don't need that in our city. That'll make you electable. That's why I wear a tie every time I go out, to be a little bit more respectable. And I think that comment speaks to the, what the value and the worth that we give people, individuals in our society, and how we assign them value. But people sometimes forget that there is 155 years of trauma since the founding of Canada. Let's think about homelessness in our city. We're not far from Main Street in Higgins. And before, in 2014, when we started a campaign for mayor, well, people, you know, they cared a bit, but not too much. But then we came up with a plan called End Homelessness Winnipeg. The city came up with that plan. Citizens came up with that plan. It was worked on by community organizations, and it was supposed to end homelessness in 10 years. It was a 10-year plan. And where are we today with that plan? 
when we other people, when we say indigenous peoples are violent, when they are not trustworthy, when they're not good, when they do not deserve the same consideration in life, where are we? So in 2014, when we said we're going to end homelessness, where are we today? Now people seem to care about it in this election. They want something done right away. I've had people come up to me and say, what are you going to do in a month? How are you going to fix this problem? As if this is a surge mentality of solving our city's issues in a month's time. As if we're in Iraq or Afghanistan and we just put some more boots in the ground, you know, we can overwhelm you know, the population and make sure that they're under control and controlled and looked after. You know, the heart of our city is bleeding and it is bled out into the suburbs and it now resides in the bus shelters of our city. And now people are starting to care. But where is the love, the care and the protection of our leadership of our city, of our province and of our country? What are we actually doing to address these issues? I know we may not come from the same place, but we must move in the same direction. When my father was born, he was not a Canadian citizen. He was not a Canadian citizen because he was Indigenous. He was First Nations. He did not have the right to vote even though he was 21 years old. And that was his reality in life. That is the history of our country. In the United States, they talk about emancipation, the right to vote. Yet in Canada, Indigenous peoples received the right to vote in 1960. I hope this serves as a continual reminder of the path that we need to take the move new forward, not only in all the institutions, in the police, but to respect people. And it's not all people that are violent towards Indigenous peoples. There is not racism everywhere. It's just a few. But when you encounter, when you see it, what do you do about it? When you see the homeless people in the streets and 70% of them are Indigenous on Main Street, do you turn the other way? Do you ask your elected officials what it is they're doing? And do you, will you ask them once the election is over what it is they're doing? And what are the actions are they actually taking to address that? When I think about those comments that we heard last night, I think about Rebecca Contois, who was thrown away literally by her killer because she was indigenous and she does not deem to have value. Where is the respect that someone can see an indigenous woman is less valuable than others? You know, Martin Luther King he said, he has been to the mountain. Murray Sinclair has shown us the mountain. My brothers and sisters, it is actually time for us to climb that mountain. And it is time for us to climb and grimp and crawl our way right up to the top to make sure we can actually see that promised land which has been promised to us for far too long. So, tepoyaki kituam, hi hi, I will finish the treaty greeting. We are gathered here on Treaty 1 territory, homeland of the Ishnabeg Nation, Nehihos, Dene peoples. This is the homeland of the Métis. This is also the home of the Inuit peoples who reside across Manitoba and here in Winnipeg, a gateway to the north. Winnipeg, c'est la terre de Riel, c'est la langue de Molière. This is where 12 people from English parishes and 12 men from Francophone parishes came together in common cause to establish our province with a bill of rights to respect each and every one of us. We were all in this together and what we should never ever forget is that we all live here together. We are all in this together and none of us are going anywhere. Hey, hey, tapwe aki Does anyone have any questions? I understand you were not present when the remarks were made. How did you hear about them and what were you told uh, was said by Mr. Um, well, I, I was informed uh, through the media and, uh, and through my team uh, as I was participating at the end part of the debate. Um, uh, I was actually a little bit shocked and I wasn't quite sure. Um, 
you know, I know that people maybe thought I should uh, come out really hot and furious right away, but, it, and I thought about that, but at the end of the day, I think a leader also has to take time to reflect on what they've heard before they offer fast comment in order to reflect on what's going on and, uh, and how it actually can help. Because I think there are so many things, it doesn't matter who wins on, Octo on October 26, 2022, this issue is not going away. Someone is going to have to address this issue in this building behind me. And I don't care who it is, but they're going to have to sit down and work with all levels of government, indigenous governments especially, community organizations, to actually come up with a plan to address what's going on so that people, young people, our children, don't feel ashamed of being indigenous. I have met so many young people who keep asking me, why are you proud to be indigenous? This is indigenous youth. And they can rattle off a list of the shame they feel sometimes of being from a First Nations community. The mayor's office is going to have to deal with it. And it's not simply assigning, uh, continuing to sign the accord, but actually get people working on it. What have you done? Where are we? So that when people drive down Main Street, they see a thriving city where we're all in this together. And so we don't have to address this in another eight years. If I run again for mayor, that we're not talking about the same things because we talked about this in 2014 and nothing has changed. Nothing's changed for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. 155. The candidate standing by his comments even today, what's your message? I think he should know better. If he is standing by them, I, uh, I, I must say I'm very surprised. I think sometimes saying you're sorry is an appropriate reaction. I think uh, acknowledging the harm that stuff can, those types of comments can make. I said in the beginning, Imagine if we make blame comments about any ethnic group or any person. You know, we're not all like that. You know, there are problems in every, every community. Any other questions? Today I have none. Ho, ho. Would anyone here like to speak? Is anyone here interested? Well, good afternoon, my name is Bill Greenwald. I'm a Anishinaabe German from Minnesota. I, uh, I've been working in the community for a number of years. I worked for the Indian Métis Friendship Center for 10 years. I'm working with groups in the neighborhood here trying to help young people uh, get their act together as far as uh, uh, drinking and, and uh, incarceration and things like that. I, you know, it's. It, it's left on the shoulders of the, of the people who are out there who are the strong people. And it's not just, a, it's not just an indigenous issue, it's a human being issue. Oh. We have to be human beings and quit being human doings. We, we've gone long enough with uh, saying that this is going to happen, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. Nothing's happening. I live, in, I live in the North End. I'm working with a group there that, it's a, it's a I, I watch group. We watch for, for places that are, uh, where vagrants hang out. We've had people come in there and just take over a house and open up a, a, a meth house. And I've gotten rid of two of them in my neighborhood. Thank God I can do that. And I don't care, you know, I'm, I'm here. You want to, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not afraid, I'm not frightened. Um, I just think that we need to find a heart. You know, we have to learn where our heart is. We have become so far removed as far as human beings go that we don't even know that we're connected to this earth and we're all relatives. We are absolutely relatives of each other. And we belong in the, in, in the human being, in, in, in the human religion, in the human uh, culture. We need to find heart. We have to allow ourselves to Look at the, uh, I, going to the heart, because this is where things get done, is through the heart, not the brain. The brain is analytical. The heart is the one where you get feelings, where you've got, uh, you've got uh, uh, love and kindness and, and uh, uh, empathy, compassion. 
You know, we can't, we can't keep working in the head. We got to get out of the head and get into the heart. And I, I say this to people uh, all through the city of Winnipeg, please find a heart, look at yourself, see if, if there's something you could do to change your, 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 your mind thought and, and get away from that negative stuff. You know, even in the religion of Christians, they say, you know, honor thy father, thy mother, and respect your neighbors. You know, and that's, that's another issue that I bring up is elders. Elders are being abused here in, this, in the North End, anywhere. Anywhere there's an indigenous family that has an elder in a care home, they're being abused. They go in, the kids go in, they go, the only time that she gets visited is on payday. And they'll take their grandmother down to the bank and, with, and draw, withdraw everything they have and they have nothing for the rest of the month. Now this goes on, I know it does. I've heard it, I've had people come up to me and ask me about it. The kids. We need, we need elders that are out there that can work with these children to give them their values, to give them their, their strength back. And, and it's up to, it, it, part of it is up to us, but part of it is up to the community too. You can't, kids can't ra be raised in a village without, without peers and, and, and without people that are, that are involved with them. So th that's what I have to say and, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm proud to be who I am today. I've learned a lot, and I, I've, I've been around a lot. So thank you very much for letting me speak. You want to say something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Dwayne Gladu. My Indian name is Benadir. I'm a traditional dancer. I worked at Wonder City as an Aboriginal council worker. The places I work, I, uh, we work with homeless people. We work with uh, people who have alcohol issues, anger issues, stuff like that. And the people that come in to use our services every day, you see them and you get to talk to them and you find out what's going on in the city. And the one thing they say is nobody cares. Nobody cares about us. And you know, that's where this has got to start, is about the caring and about the love. You know, they, they want help, but then they're too scared to come get it because then they have to go through all the red tape and stuff like that. And they don't want to go through the red tape. They want just help you know, with alcoholism, housing, stuff like that. They don't want to fill out 150 forms. They don't want to be asked 150 questions. They just want help, they need. And some of them can't read, some of them can't write, some of them are from residential school, some of them are from 60 school, you know. And where is this all coming from? Residential school. It goes back to their residential, 60 school, CFS. CFS still right now. Right now, it's still CFS. Our kids are still getting taken out of homes, you know, because we're indigenous. Well, there's some of us who've been there, done that, but look at where, where we are today. I work full time, okay, but at one time I was on the streets. You know, I know what it's like back in the day, okay? But they used, today I can talk about it. You know, and I can help other people with this stuff that goes on. And I'm also a traditional dancer where I dance with the people out there. I travel around the country and I enjoy helping people out there. You know, we need to get together as a human being race and really stop this racial stuff because it's not helping us. You know, our women are a backbone. Our women are the ones who put up the teepees. As men, we go out and hunt. We keep the community alive. We're as, we're as one. Why can't we be that today? So I say, me go, me go, say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good weekend for those of you who got one.